Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I am racing to get this video recorded before my roommates come home and I also have to poop pretty badly, so I'm in quite a rush. Let's go ahead and get started. Today we'll be covering right skew and phantoms. Alrighty, so I've got the iPad out, so let's go ahead and get into today's lesson. Basically, the subject of today is right skew, which is another type of database race condition. So one database race condition, and this is kind of a disclaimer that I didn't explicitly cover in its own video, is lost updates. Uh, the reason for that being that I effectively covered lost updates in the ACID transactions introductory video, where you know one example is my friend and I are both trying to modify a counter, and we both wanna add one to it, but because I basically read the old value and so did he, one of our increments gets lost. Um, and basically the solution to that is just locking. So let's not worry about that. We're gonna talk about right skew. So let's go ahead and get into it. Basically, here's an example of right skew. So imagine that we have basically an emergency room. And right now I have a table with the names of the doctors and whether they're active or inactive. Now one invariant of this emergency room is that greater than one doctor has to be active, right? We need at least one doctor active at all times. So if a patient comes in with an emergency, they can be tended to. So we've got Dr. Oz and Dr. Toboggan currently active, but let's say that they both want to take breaks. Dr. Oz, you know, has to take a break to go grab some tissues and lotion and Toboggan just went ahead and smoked some weed. So now they both want to set themselves to inactive and they can basically just both go ahead and do separate rights and do that, right? Inactive. And then the same thing, goes for Dr. Toboggan. We've changed our status and now the invariant of the database is broken and this is bad. So how can we actually go ahead and avoid something like right skew from happening? Well, basically the solution is to use locking, but a little bit differently than before. So as you can see over here on the left side of the screen, we've got three different locks and these are going to be our row level locks. All databases have them. You're able to basically grab a lock on a row when you wanna be able to modify it. But the fundamental issue with right skew is that the two rows that are basically affecting the invariant are not impacted by each other's locks, right? If I wanna to write to Dr. Toboggan, I only have to grab Dr. Toboggan's lock and I don't need to grab Dr. Oz's lock. Hence, these two writes can actually both go ahead and happen and they can just grab their own lock and there's never actually an issue with the invariant. However, with right skew, in order to prevent it, what we need to do is actually go ahead and grab all the locks of the relevant rows. So in the case of right skew, what we need to do is grab locks and we want to do it where doctor is active. Right, so this way, if any doctor wants to go from active to inactive, we have to basically go ahead and grab all the locks of the other active doctors. This way, when Dr. Toboggan and Dr. Oz try to go offline basically at the same time, they both try and grab the same locks and only one of those rights is going to be permitted to win, the other is going to fail. So as you can see with right skew, the solution is basically to grab more locks of rows that you may not have thought you needed, but the truth is that you do, because even though these rows aren't inherently related, they both impact the same database invariant. So I hope that makes sense. Let's move on to another variation of right skew. So this one is actually going to be called phantoms. So let's imagine that I'm in a bakery, right? And it's me and Trump because we're both fat and we love cookies. So as you can see, here are two existing rows in the database. Let's say that Jordan went ahead and bought the cookies, right? So that's an example of the row. And then you have my email right there, sexycoderman at gmail.com. Similarly, Trump went ahead and bought the pie. He's got carpets match drapes at yahoo.com. But what if we were to both go in there and try and get a cupcake? So we've got this row and I would go ahead and write myself because I just claim the cupcakes. And then, you know, we got our email, blah, 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 blah. And then similarly, Trump, who's trying to get the cupcakes at the same time, also puts his row in the database. So cupcake, Donald, and then his email, right? The issue now is that we've both claimed cupcakes. If there were locks on these rows, it wouldn't even help us because the row that we want to lock, which is, you know, this cupcake row right here, it didn't even exist yet. We actually wrote a new row to the database table so that we couldn't even lock it. It literally was not physically possible. And that's kind of the issue with phantoms. Phantoms occur when two people write new rows that conflict. And the issue with new rows is there are no locks to grab. 
if we can't both grab a lock, it means that you know our rights aren't actually going to realize that they're conflicting with one another. They're both going to go through, and then we have a broken database invariant. So how can we actually go ahead and fix a phantom? This is by doing something known as materializing conflicts. So what materializing conflicts basically means is that for every row, or basically for every item in the bakery stock that we could possibly have some sort of conflict over, we need to pre-populate that row in the database so that we can actually grab a lock for it. We said the bakery has cookies, pie, and a cupcake. But instead of just you know writing that row into the database when someone claims them, we need to pre-populate all of those rows in the database already so that they can actually have a lock object corresponding to them. So in the case of the actual cupcake, you know we have Jordan, we have Donald, and we both want it to be the case that we get our fields in the name and email. However, what we're both going to have to first do, because there's now a row that exists, is grab the lock for it. So only one of us is going to win. Let's say Jordan manages to grab the lock first, and then goes ahead and writes his name here, and then puts his email over here. It means that now Donald cannot overwrite this. You know, we just go ahead and say if there's already a name in there that it can't be overwritten. And now Jordan wins and actually gets the cupcake. Before, before we were able to materialize conflicts, there was no actual lock to prevent race conditions happening, and now the invariants of our system were broken. Okay guys, well, I hope that makes sense. Uh, as always, hope the video is useful, and if you have any questions, reach out to me in the comments. Have a great day, and I will speak to you soon.